Today we're gonna to talk about how to fix knee pain when kneeling on the floor or when you're just in a half squat on the floor or you ever need to put your knees down to a semi-hard surface or even a soft surface. I'm gonna explain my own personal history with having knee pain when doing stuff like this and how I've solved it myself. So if you watch through to the end of the video, you'll understand the basic fundamental problem here and how to fix some of these problems so that you don't feel pain when you're kneeling on the ground. Pony. Pony. Just kidding, he's totally okay. We're gonna just be using him to talk about the knee joint because when people have knee pain when they're kneeling, they often worry that they've got some sort of damage in the knee. Doctors will tell them it's a meniscus tear, a cartilage damage, bursitis, whatever you wanna call it, I don't care because on this channel, we ATM always think muscles. I don't think about muscles. That's because you don't have any muscles. Touche. Now, to be clear, being on a hard surface and jamming bones into hard surfaces can certainly be uncomfortable. But the common medical and physical therapy explanations don't really give you anything useful to do. There are no strategies to reduce that pain besides using pads or cushions or whatever, or just avoiding the position altogether. But if we ATM and always think muscles, we might find that there is some way to make this more comfortable over time. When I was in my 20s, it was really painful for me to put my knees on the floor and go into an all fours position for something like a yoga cat cow. And I thought this was really strange because growing up, I played roller hockey and ice hockey goalie, which required me to slam my legs down and down and down and down. And it never bothered me back then. I'm now in my 40s and I've restored my ability to put my knees down on semi-hard surfaces. I don't jam myself into concrete or anything, but I also don't feel like it's gonna be dangerous or really painful and sharp and horrible for me to be down on the ground like this and move around. You okay down there? Just taking a little rest. So in this video, I'm gonna share three exercises that I think might be helpful for you in restoring your ability to put your knees down on the ground without pain. At the end of this video, I'll also link to some videos that'll help you with other knee pain exercises that may be helpful as well. And I wanna take one more second to talk about muscles in terms of comfort when you are on your knees. If I go into this position and I have poor muscle strength and control over all these other little shifted angles, what's gonna happen? It means I'm going to have uncontrolled pressure down onto the bones that are contacting the ground. But if I have muscle firing that can adjust, attenuate, and even absorb some of the stress of the position, it's gonna feel a lot better. These muscles, these muscles, these muscles all need to be able to fire and stabilize well and make little micro adjustments to make the position less uncomfortable. Imagine, for example, that my hip muscles are too stiff to allow me to get into this position. So when I try to back up, I'm going to have these muscles really tight, creating a force that jams my knee harder into the ground. But if these muscles are nice and pliable and strong, I can make micro adjustments that make the position a lot more comfortable. If there's a really bony ridge somewhere that's jamming into the floor and I don't have the option to shift off of that just by a couple degrees, I'm going to be at maximum discomfort. But if I do have that mobility and control, then it's not going to be so uncomfortable because I can find the position that doesn't really hurt. So to start improving your overall hip mobility, I'm going to have you slide near a wall and you're going to stick your feet up on the wall and try to bring the ankle right up onto the opposite thigh, just like this. If you feel like it's too hard and you can't even get here, then slide yourself further away from the wall so that this knee is straighter. It may be totally straight or you may need to just put the foot on the floor in order to get to this position that's totally fine. Don't force it and just crank it because then you'll hurt this knee. Just be gentle about it. If you need to, just try to go to there and that's fine. And over time, you can slowly work your way towards this position, okay? So once you can achieve ankle to the knee a little bit, then what we're gonna do is just think about pressing this ankle that way. So you're trying to push into the thigh and you're gonna feel muscles on your hip here fire up and then you can relax it and then see if you can do it again, push 
and relax. So you're going to be feeling these hip muscles firing to create what's called internal rotation. So right now the femur, this thigh bone is in external rotation. It's top of it is pointing out to create internal rotation. We would do this, right? So my leg is blocking it. I'm using some muscles here to create that internal rotation. That's going to help this hip just feel more safe in this more open position. We're just trying to free up some commonly stiff, weak muscles in your hip joint here, which will help you adjust better when you are in a kneeling position. This is just a basic fundamental level of control that we need a little bit of strength down here. And we're just going to do this five to 10 times. We're going to relax and then we're going to switch to the other side. Again, find the distance that you can actually tolerate and then just fire into the thigh. We're going to do this for contractions, three to five seconds, five to 10 times. Okay. And one more thing, if you really can't do it even on the floor, then you can just try to put yourself down on the ground, move your leg here, and then you can create that same position. So for anyone who's really stiff, this is a nice little workaround to get that same kind of work and to approach that position a little more safely. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need the space here. Thank you very much. Huge thanks to Miss Brenda for the $50 donation via Super Thanks here on YouTube. I also want to say a big thanks to Ashutosh and Dana for your donations as well. If you want to support this channel too, use the Patreon or PayPal links you'll find in the description box or use the Join and Thanks buttons you'll find on YouTube. Now let's get back to it. Then you're going to be lying on your side. Of course, use an exercise mat if this feels uncomfortable for you. And you're going to take a yoga block or some cushions or pillows or whatever. You're just going to put your knee up on top. Your other leg just put comfortably somewhere. It's not a big deal. There are some nuances, but we don't need to get into those right now. What we're going to do is focus on lifting the foot and ankle up as high as we can go while thinking about keeping this side open. So we're not trying to just hike the hip into our shoulder. We're trying to keep that opened up. You can put your arm up here. We're just going to be lifting this foot and ankle up towards the ceiling, keeping downward pressure into the yoga block or cushion or whatever. What we don't want to be doing is also doing that, right? We're that's a different exercise. It's an okay exercise, but in this exercise, we're feeling the hip internal rotators, the TFL, the glute minimus. We're trying to work these muscles that are kind of towards the front of the seam of the side of your pants, right near the pocket. You want those muscles to get kind of tired. You might feel a little bit elsewhere in the glute, but we're really trying to feel this stuff working right here. You're just going to go until you get fatigued, go slow and controlled. And while you're doing this, make sure your low back doesn't arch heavily. What I mean by that is I don't want you, you to feel like you're going like this when you're doing the repetitions, right? I want your low back to just stay flat and under control. It's very common for us to lose touch with these muscles. And then as a substitute, as a compensation, we cheat and we'll, arch our back really hard firing the low back muscles instead of the hip internal rotators. So keep firing, keep firing, keep firing. You can also experiment over time with different levels of knee bend and you're going to find that that changes the sensation that you feel in the exercise. You can also experiment with different angles with the thigh and the rest of your torso. And that's really going to change things as well. It's totally okay to go to different angles, find one that's really difficult for you and keep working on all of them so that you have the ability to go into different hip and leg angles so that it doesn't hurt your knee when you're kneeling. Of course you want to do this on both sides. So make sure that you do both sides. And if you feel like there's one side that's obviously weaker than the other, then do an extra round for that weaker side. Man, I thought you said you had some job applications. Nobody's gotten back to you. No interviews yet. It's the economy, man. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh, just go hang out somewhere else. And this exercise is really good at helping you find the muscles that stabilize your hip, meaning your butt muscles. So what you're going to do is just put your shin onto the edge of a couch and you're going to kind of find and seek that balance point where you feel like all this 
is just firing. It's hard. You feel those muscles working and you're just going to hang out there. You'll notice my other foot is on the floor. That's to help me balance. As you get better at this, you can take that foot off the floor, but for right now, it's totally fine to just keep it on the floor. And then you're going to seek different angles and positions. You're going to try to go to where you feel like these muscles try to turn off, right? Like if you go somewhere and you feel your body twist and your low back dump so that this can turn off, you got to catch it. You got to find the position, keep this on, slowly approach that position where these tried to turn off and just keep them on. And the goal here is to make sure you have volition at every position. That means you have control. Okay. You want to, you want to have strength in these glutes in a lengthened position. You want to be able to go deep towards the couch, meaning this angle between thigh and torso gets smaller and smaller while these muscles still stay on. Search around, make those muscles work. One thing that can help you is to just go up and down a little bit. So you want to feel like these muscles are firing to lift you up. You'll notice I'm not just lifting my chest. I'm moving the whole torso up by using these muscles to move the pelvis and the spine and the rib cage just go along for the ride. You can burn out these muscles 30 to 60 seconds or more if you can tolerate it. Whew, that burns, man, that burns. Whew. And then you can work your way out of that and then switch to the other side. Do that other side again, search around, use whatever assistance you need and burn out those glutes, burn out those high hamstrings, find those muscles because these are the muscles that are going to help you adjust your position when you're kneeling on the floor. I have found that having stronger glutes, better glute control, better glute strength has made such a difference to the comfort levels of my knees when I'm on the floor kneeling. I can't give you the exact reason why, but I know it is observable that glutes make such a difference to being able to position yourself on your knees without pain. Okay. And whew, 30 to 60 seconds of that, your booty should be on fire. Now, if you are just starting out trying to fix this kind of knee pain when kneeling, then I encourage you to do the three exercises I've just shown you only twice a week, because I'm assuming your hips are kind of weak. You haven't really trained them much. And if you do all these exercises every single day, right off the bat, you're probably going to be crippled with soreness. So with all three of these exercises, I would suggest doing two rounds and then a third round for the weaker side. So you'll do that stretch against the wall or on the floor floor, then you'll do the active internal rotation, then you'll do the couch booty exercise. You could do them all in a circuit, meaning one after the other, and then start back at the beginning and do them all. Or you can do two rounds against the wall, third for the weak side, two rounds on the ground with the active internal rotation and another for the weak side, and then onto the couch, two rounds and another for the weak side. You get to choose because it's your life. How come I don't get to choose to not have a job? I'm not having this conversation right now. I'm just not. I would also encourage you to consider doing some basic knee strengthening exercises, which I will link to up here and in the description box. When you pair all this together, you'll have better hip function and better basic knee strength and function, which will help you then put your knees on the floor without pain. But if all that sounds like too much to do, then just start with this for right now and then look at the other stuff when you feel ready. The important thing is that you are doing things at a pace that you can be consistent about so you can improve your body over time. Some of you may feel like you get immediate benefits from these exercises and that's great. Some of you may need a few weeks or a few months to really feel like your knees are improving and can tolerate being in contact with the ground. No matter what, it's okay. Just take your time and know that slow is safe and fast is foolish. When you're ready to start testing your knees, be sure to use padding if you feel like you need it and start practicing putting lighter amounts of pressure on the bones. Know that you can't just go 100% when you were at 0%. So you can just start exposing yourself to a little bit of pressure, giving yourself assistance as you need it, 
giving yourself time to rest as you need it, maybe doing one knee at a time for five, 10 seconds, and then relaxing, and then going for longer and longer periods, and then not using any help at all, so that you can practice using the muscles that control the positions. Remember if you feel like things are getting uncomfortable around the knees, that your glutes make a big difference. So see if you can find them. Think about using them the same way you use them in that couch exercise, so that they can take some of the pressure off the knee. And when you start getting really ambitious, you can start actually knocking your knee into the ground to see how hard you can do it and to see what you can actually tolerate. It's also why you see Thai kickboxers kicking their shins into hard objects. By exposing your bones to impact, your bones get stronger and your body doesn't feel so threatened by those impacts anymore. But again, remember that this is about gradual progression. You do not want to be doing things super hard, super fast right from the beginning. Take your time. And let me know how your progress goes in fixing your knee pain when kneeling. Drop me a comment down below and let me know where you started from and where you ended up. Are you now kneeling on bamboo, on wood, on concrete, on steel? For more videos to help your knees, check these out here. If you want to support this channel, use the Patreon or PayPal links you'll find in the description box or the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. Seriously, are you just going to be hanging out here all the time? You're not going to get a job. Bye.